Asker fans, it's Holy Week, it's Masters Week, it's finally spring. It's a nice day out here, finally, for Nebraska football spring camp. Hello, this is Tom Chattel's Press Pass, Sam McEwen here. Tom, wow, this is a nice day. Finally, we got uh, a good feels one. feels like spring, doesn't it? Oh, finally, finally. We had some pretty good interviews today. It's April 4th here at Tuesday. We talked to Ed Foley, the special teams coordinator, running back coach E.J. Barthel, and a few others. You were talking to uh, to Foley, who's just a kind of a character and a storyteller, and he's just got a lot of cool things about him. It's, it, it, he's one of those guys that you're kind of glad is here. He, he's kind of a Matt Rule translator, and at the same time, he's he's his own guy. Yeah, he, he, he's he's he, 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 he he he's becoming my, my my favorite coach very quickly. Um, I love the stories. I, I, he's a Jersey Ed, I call him. He's from the, the, the Philadelphia side of uh, Jersey. But I, I was asking him about the 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 Hurleys from the the the, the final four last night. The, the and he he knew the or he, he knows the uh, the, the dad. The, the, the famous high school basketball coach in Jersey City, St. Anthony's, and it just is all the stories. I love the storytelling, um, but I've never heard Sam. I've never heard anybody break down special teams like him, and and uh, we don't often get to interview the special teams. They haven't really. Some coaches here haven't had, didn't have a special teams coach, um, but to hear him break down the wind in the stadium and and uh, you know how they uh, are, are are trying to attack the wind as the the kickoffs, the the punt returns, um, you know, are trying to use it to their advantage. It's just a small sample of, of, of the stuff he talked about for about 20 minutes, and and it was in great detail. Um, these guys love to love talking football, and um, I I love it. I totally agree that we've Nebraska's had some special teams coordinators who did not really seem to like having the job. It was like their second job. <laughs> right. And with Foley, it's his first job. One of the examples that Tom's talking about of detail is he's talking about Brian Buscini on uh, on Saturday at the scrimmage, and he placed four of ten punts right at a specific spot on the eight-yard line when he was pooch punting. This is the kind of detail that, that Foley has. And I know you're going to have a column later just about their desire to, to, to return the ball more, yeah. just get more punt and kickoff returns yeah. where guys get their hands on the ball instead of letting it roll. Yeah, it's it's uh, and what we were talking, was talking about you know the the kind of guy he wants returning the punts. The most important thing, um, you know, that, that that he wants is somebody who, who who's going to track the ball and then and then hang on to it, catch it, not catch it over. You know, you don't lose the ball. You you don't catch it over your shoulder. You're, you're right in front of it. You know, you you, you square up and when here it comes. You catch it, and uh, you're not worried about being hit. You know, you're not worried about. Um, about uh, about losing the ball, like like some you know you, 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 you can watch a punt returner sometimes and you can just see it that, he, that this guy's nervous. He's worried about everything except catching the ball, and sure enough, he he drops it. Um, so, and I, one thing I also wanted to ask him about Sam was uh, the, the the fair catch. How do you feel about the fair catch? And they they don't. I, I prefer not to fair catch, especially if there's nobody around you. You do you you, you never fair catch. You catch it and run. You, know, you, you, you try to make somebody miss. So I, I love these little things um, uh, because I think there has been a lot of fair catching in Nebraska over the years. Oh yeah, and I feel like <laughs> even there's like there's like ten yards of right. empty space around you. Right. You still got the hand up and the whole crowd's groaning. What are you doing? I think those days are probably gone. I don't know. It's April fourth. We don't. We have a long way from playing a game, but so far, boy, these things sound good. They do absolutely. Running backs coach EJ Barthel talked to us well today. Um, you know, he he kind of takes a high road. I, I this is Nebraska's third running backs coach in three years, and yeah. I just get the sense that that they're kind of starting over. Uh, that they're hitting the reset button with their techniques and their philosophy and all those things. He mentioned wanting to have a mindset, right? So uh, this idea of if you go to the store, uh, you buy a, a Coca-Cola, or in your case, a Diet Coke, you know exactly what it's going to taste like because they know exactly what it is. Right. And that's what they want Nebraska's running back brand to be. You know exactly when those guys take the field, what kind of players they're going to be. They talk about the phrase dominant contact. What does that mean? Well, that when you hit somebody, you're bringing the full force of your weight behind you and you are pushing somebody back. And so Barthel talked a little bit about that. He's pleased with Gabe Irvin. I think everybody has been pleased with him. Anthony Grant, he said, is just kind of learning uh, to do some certain things. He doesn't want to necessarily teach him how to run. 
He wants to teach them where they need to insert themselves into the run game, where the hole is going to be, those kind of things. And for somebody that's been watching this for a while now and watching guys kind of run into the backs of their offensive linemen, I think that's just a fine fine thing to do. Okay, so coming up Thursday, Matt Rule is going to talk, uh, Tom, and, and there's going to be conversations in, in, in that regard. Anything that you're interested to hear from, uh, from Coach Rule here in a couple of days? No, Jay, it's more progress. Uh, you know, I, I'm really keeping uh, trying to keep an eye on the offensive line. Um, and I, I, th- I think Rule was keeping a very close eye on it as well. I feel like, uh, you know, Donovan Rayola is a, a guy who doesn't like to, to say much. So, <laughs> That's right. uh, you know, Rule might be our, 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 our sort of contact there to tell us how good the offensive line is doing. So I might mention just about that. Um, you know, you know how I feel. I, I feel like Nebraska has, has become too much about quarterbacks and receivers. It's, it's, it needs to go back to being offensive line and running backs. And one thing I'm curious about the running backs, I don't know if this was addressed or not today, but, um, you know, in the Scott Frost era, they were so uh, – one of the priorities was the, the, the pass blocking ability of the running back. Right. If you couldn't pass block, you weren't going to play. I think that's good in a way, but I think the running back priority has to be he's a running back who can make people miss and go score touchdowns and he can get first downs, and that, that kind of guy has to be on the field. So uh, I, I think as we get to know these guys, we'll, we'll, we'll get more of, uh, of, uh, of an understanding of that hopefully. But um, um, hopefully Coach Selich told them about that too, right? So anyway. No arguments here. Um, No arguments for me on that. It'll be interesting to see where Nebraska goes from here. For Tom, I'm Sam. This is Tom Chattel's Press Pass. Be back on Thursday. Tom Tom will be back with uh, one of our other reporters. Thanks, Husker fans.